Hi, it's me, and today I'm testing out another fast standard lens for APS-C mirrorless cameras, the Samyang 35mm f1.2 UMC CS. It's available for Canon EOS M cameras, Sony E-mount cameras, Fuji X, and Micro Four Thirds. Its price is about £350 here in the UK and about $400 in the US, depending on where you look for it. Seems like reasonable value, considering that extremely bright maximum aperture of f1.2, which can give you really fast shutter speeds and very nicely out of focus backgrounds. It's only for mirrorless cameras and only covers an APS-C image circle, and so it's the full frame equivalent of a 52mm lens, with the equivalent depth of field of about f2. But of course, you'll still get the faster shutter speeds that the light intensity of f1.2 can provide, so shooting in dark conditions is made much easier. So it's a standard lens, neither wide angle nor telephoto, really great for everyday photography of all kinds of different subjects, and shooting at f1.2 can really get your subjects to stand out. Bear in mind though that it is a manual focus, manual aperture optic. Shooting with manual focus does take a little practice and it will slow you down, but with all the focusing aids on modern digital cameras, you get used to it in no time, really. The lens is medium sized and has a little weight to it, but it does feel lovely and solid. You can tell that this one's for Fuji X mount due to the slightly deeper metallic lens mount at the back. Honestly, I've tested a load of these Samyang manual focus lenses for mirrorless cameras and their quality feels similarly good on all of them. An aperture ring with lovely positive clicks to it and nine aperture blades for smooth bokeh when stopped down. The focus ring turns very smoothly, its turning circle could be a bit longer though, I think, for more precise focusing at f1.2. Also missing is a hyperfocal scale, which would be useful, loads of reviews complain about that. The filter size is 62mm, and the lens comes with a cloth pouch and quite a deep lens hood, again made of good quality plastic. So, overall, the lens does feel lovely in your hand and on your camera, and the build quality for a manual focus optic is really decent. Alright, image quality. I'm testing this one on a Fuji X-T20 with its 24 megapixel APS-C sensor. At f1.2, the middle of the image is nice and sharp, although contrast could be a little higher, and the corners look really nice, actually, good sharpness and almost no chromatic aberration, although I can spot a little astigmatism here, the horizontal resolution seems a little higher. Stop down to f2, and the corners look a lot brighter, sharpness doesn't seem to be any better there, but the image in the middle looks a lot punchier now. We see perfection in the middle at f2.8, and a little improvement over in the corners, and the lens reaches its best sharpness at f4. It stays this sharp down to f8, although stop down to f11 and softness begins to come in from the physical effects of diffraction. Overall though, it's a very good performance here really, the lens is offering very solid image quality, just get her in focus and you're flying. Alright, vignetting and distortion. Impressively, this lens projects almost no distortion, although vignetting is quite heavy at f1.2, unsurprisingly. Stop down to f2 though, and those corners brighten up pretty quickly. Now then, I've been surprised to see that a lot of 35-40mm to 40 millimeter lenses I've tested for APS-C mirrorless cameras have serious problems with close-up image quality. Fuji's own lenses tend to be weak in this regard, and this Samyang lens doesn't particularly impress either. f1.2 is a bit soft, but stop down to f2 for good sharpness here. Let's see now how the lens works against bright lights. Impressively, despite a bit of glaring, we see almost no flaring here at all. Nice. And finally, bokeh. This lens can give you very out of focus backgrounds, and nearly all the time they look really smooth and undistracting. So then, oddly enough, in the back of my mind, I wasn't really expecting all that much from this lens, and I, I don't know why, perhaps because it hasn't received that much review coverage since coming to market. But finally getting a chance to test it out proved to be very fruitful, it's clearly a bit of a gem. 
I love its very impressive sharpness and smooth bokeh, its resistance to flaring and low distortion, and it's just a very useful lens for everyday shooting with tons of creative potential. I think this lens is great, good value, and very useful. If you're happy with manual focusing, then it comes highly recommended. Now then, occasionally at the end of my reviews, I like to do some comparisons for what they're worth. The 30 to 40 mm APS-C mirrorless lens market is jam-packed at the moment, so I want to take a brief look at how this Samyang lens compares to the competition. The Miticon 35mm f0.95 Mark II is very interesting and a bit of a favourite lens of mine. It has lots of character. It's also manual focus, has a much brighter maximum aperture. However, the Samyang lens is far sharper at comparable apertures and it has far better optical qualities in other areas too. The Maker 35mm f1.7 is a very inexpensive manual focus option. Its image quality is the definition of average. Nothing bad by any means, but the Samyang lens is simply in a different league, and its maximum aperture is of course far brighter. There's also the amazingly cheap 7 Artisans 35mm f1.2 lens. I've just started testing it out for a review. Even for a manual focus lens, it's amazing value for money, but for my tests so far, its image quality seems to be alarmingly bad. There's also the Sigma 30mm f1.4 Contemporary for Sony E-mounts and Micro Four Thirds. I can't really comment on that one, as I haven't reviewed it fully yet, but I plan to cover it soon. And also, the crazy Handavision Ibilux 40mm f0.85. I've just started testing a copy of this crazy lens, and it's quite a story in itself. Watch out for an upcoming video. On the Fuji side of things, there's their little autofocus Fuji XF 35mm f1.4, another nice lens, but again, the Samyang lens was considerably sharper in my tests, particularly in the image corners. The Samyang lens is also a little brighter, and had slightly smoother bokeh in my opinion, and has far sharper close-up image quality. On the Sony side of things, there's their 35mm f1.8 OSS, which boasts autofocus and image stabilisation, very nice. But that Sony lens shows tons of colour fringing, and lets in only about half the amount of light. The Samyang lens is also quite a bit sharper, particularly at close focus distances, and the Samyang's bokeh is a bit nicer as well. And finally, on the Canon side, for their EOS M cameras, there's the brilliant new 32mm f1.4 STM. An awesome lens, highly recommended, but correspondingly pretty expensive, and with a very slightly darker maximum aperture. There are probably even more options out there at the moment, but those are the most important ones I can think of right now. The Samyang fills its own niche by offering that extra bright aperture and excellent picture quality, so if that is what you're looking for, you'll be really pleased with it.